Hello everyone, welcome into Fatty's Feast where we make the best food you'll ever eat without leaving your backyard. My name is Josh. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about this bad boy right here, the offset smoker. We're gonna talk about why offset smokers are king, the pros, the cons, who offset smokers are good for, and what you should look for when purchasing an offset smoker. Let's get started. So this is probably the most beginner video I've ever made when it comes to smoking. And the reason I'm making this video today is I've received a lot of questions from people regarding offset smokers. I'm gonna answer most of those questions today, but it's mostly from people that are looking to get into offset smoking. They wanna know the pros, the cons, who it's good for, how much of a pain it is to manage. So it's gonna be a lot of me talking, I apologize. But by the end of this video, I'm hoping that if you're one of those people that's deciding should I get into offset smoking, real barbecue, if you will, is this the right path for me? Okay, so let's start with what is an offset smoker? Now I've done videos outlining this smoker itself, but this is the Freedom 94 from Patriot Pits based in Massachusetts. This is a top of the line backyard smoker. But basically an offset smoker is composed of three different parts. You have your firebox right here, your cooking chamber here, and then your stack up here. And the reason it's called an offset smoker is because your food is offset from the fuel or what's cooking it, the fire. So you burn a fire down here in your firebox, the heat comes into the cooking chamber, and cooks your food low and slow. And then the gases escape from the stack. Now these are also known as stick burning smokers. And these are the king of any kind of smoker you could ever buy. The flavor you're gonna get from using real wood, real fire is second to none. You're not gonna get that on any other type of smoker. Now there are other types of smokers on the market. So let's talk about those briefly. First, you have your propane smokers. Now your propane smoker uses propane as its fuel. And with a propane smoker, you technically don't have to even use wood, but you add wood in a tray, usually soaked for flavor. And as time goes on, the wood sort of smolders and off gases and that gives you your smoke flavor. Next, you have your kettle smokers or charcoal smokers, such as your Big Green Egg or Weber Smoky Mountain. Now with these smokers, charcoal is your main source of heat. And then to add wood flavor, you can add wood chunks and those just smolder as time goes on. Now, the cool thing about those types of smokers is they can also function as a grill. And then your last type of smoker besides the offset smoker, which can also function as a grill, is your pellet smoker. Now, pellet smokers are the king of convenience. You literally just turn it to the temperature you want, load your hopper with pellets, you're good to go. Now, I'm gonna talk more about the pros and cons of each smoker as time goes on, but I personally believe that the pros of an offset smoker, as far as making real barbecue goes, outweighs the cons. One question I've been getting pretty frequently is can you grill on the offset smoker? Don't do it. Just don't do it, please. Technically, yes, you could take the inside of this, load this up with charcoal and wood and grill. But the problem with that is the inside of this cooking chamber is seasoned. And what that does is it takes any kind of ash that's coming from the firebox into the cooking chamber and it makes it stick. Therefore, that stuff's not getting on your food. It also prevents it from rusting. So the minute you decide to light a real fire in the smoking chamber, uh, you're in for a wild ride because then you're gonna have to reseason and you might damage the thing. And if you're spending good money on a smoker, you don't wanna do that. Now, another thing we can talk about are cowboy fire boxes. My Brazos has this where the lid actually opens up and you can have a grill grate right on top. Now those are great if you wanna actually just use this as a grill randomly one day, but personally, I don't like them. A lot of people think, oh, how neat would it be to actually you know, grill a steak while I'm cooking a brisket for 16 hours? It's not. And the reason for that is you're gonna have temperature swings while you're cooking a steak while also cooking a brisket. Think about it, you're gonna have grease dripping down your fire, it's gonna cause spikes, and you're gonna keep opening the lid up to try to flip your steak or look at it, and that's gonna also cause temperature swings within the cooking chamber. I've also seen people get this smoker up to like 500 something degrees, which is just really damaging the inside of this. This is not meant to function as a grill, it's a smoker. So if you want a grill, go buy a grill. If you want a smoker, don't use it to grill. And I think the misconception of this really stems from pellet smokers and their popularity because you can turn those up to 500 something degrees and actually get a nice sear on a steak, but they're designed to do that. This is not designed to be a grill. Now, that being said, what can you cook on an offset smoker? Well, your obvious answers are your briskets, your pork butt, your ribs, and those are typically longer cooks. I, however, cook as much as I possibly can on the smoker. I do sausages, I do chicken, I do burgers. I know that sounds weird considering I said you can't grill on this thing, but even doing your typical grill meats, they turn out amazing. Like the only way I really cook chicken now is on the smoker and it's a quick cook as well. So even though it's not designed to function as a grill, you can still use this thing to cook many different food items. That, literally anything you could put in the oven, you can make on the smoker. Except a cake, maybe. I haven't tried that, but maybe I'll add that to my list. 
So now let's talk about the pros and cons of an offset smoker. The number one pro, in my opinion, is this is as close you're gonna get to having real barbecue, if you will. And I'm not saying if you own one of these and make this stuff in your backyard, it's fake barbecue, it's not. But I'm saying those famous places in Texas or in the Carolinas or in Tennessee, wherever you go, you can make that kind of quality food in your backyard with an offset smoker. I don't like to brag, but I have made brisket that I think tastes better than some of the brisket I've had in Texas. And that's just doing this on a smoker like this. So if you want real, true smoke flavor, an offset is the way to go. I've literally never had barbecue done on any other smoker that tastes as good as it does on an offset. And yes, you can get some smoke flavor on other smokers, but you can't beat the offset. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Next, compared to other smokers, you have a large cooking area. Propane smokers are typically stand-up cabinet smokers. So you're limited what you can put on each shelf and you have to stack it on top of each other. Your kettle and your big green egg, you're gonna have that just one grill surface to cook on. And you're really gonna be struggling if you wanna do anything more than just like one brisket or two racks of ribs. Your pellet smokers are usually smaller. That's just how they are. But with this bad boy, I mean, you can fit a ton of food. And if I open this up, there's also a top rack that I don't have in there right now, but I can put that in and add more food to it. The next pro is your fuel source. Wood is extremely cheap. I got a quart of mixed hardwood delivered to my house for $180, and I'm still trying to go through that stuff. If you think about pellets, those are, you know, however many dollars a bag, and then your propane tanks are gonna be, you know, $20 a fill. You pay more up front, but in the long run, that fuel, the wood, lasts forever. I'm still trying to go through that quart, and I took delivery of that about two years ago. And it's undercover and dry and all that good stuff. You can check out my wood choice video as well. But you can't go wrong with just buying wood by the cord. The next thing is you don't have to open your cooking chamber to add fuel. You literally do everything down here at the firebox and you leave this alone. That's gonna make for a more efficient cooking process so you don't have to worry about your food cooling down at all or spiking or whatever. And then the last pro is these are very low maintenance. I have a little bit of rust that's forming on top of this firebox, but literally all I'm gonna have to do is just coat that in some oil and it'll go away. I season my smoker once or twice a year. You just have to clean it out a little bit when you're done cooking. And other than that, that's it. There's no scrubbing anything down or anything like that. And if you take care of them and don't allow them to rust, these things will last you a lifetime. When I say a lifetime, you're gonna be passing it down to probably many generations. Now, unfortunately, not everything's perfect, so there are some cons with offset smokers. The first thing is the price. You're gonna to need to spend a minimum of $500 if you want a good quality offset smoker. And I'll talk more about that when we get into what to look for when buying an offset. But at the end of the day, you get what you pay for, and the more money you spend, the better smoker you're gonna get, really. So if you're looking to just spend $200 on something, offset smoking is not for you because you're not gonna get a good product if you just spend $200. The next thing is you do have to manage a real fire. Some people don't like that and that's understandable. I mean, some people don't wanna freeze their ass off in the middle of winter or be drenched in sweat in the middle of summer. It literally takes a crazy person to wanna do that. But for the kind of food you can pump out on these things, it is what it is. But if you're one of those people that just likes turning a dial and setting something to 250 degrees and going inside and watching the game or whatever, you're sort of gonna be in for a rude awakening because offset smoking is a chore. Once you get good at it, it becomes less of a chore and you can walk away for some time, but nonetheless, it is a chore and you're gonna have to spend a lot of time out of the smoker. Now keep in mind, that might mean 16-ish hours if you're cooking a brisket, but I love it, so I do it and I don't look back. The next con is it does take a bit of practice to learn how to really use your offset smoker. And in my fire management video, I talked about the importance of doing practice burns. Now I've only had this smoker for a few months and once again, I'm borrowing it, but I had to do about two practice burns to really understand what everything does. I had to figure out the size of wood I needed. I needed to figure out what happens if I close that damper, what happens if I open the door. So you're gonna have to dedicate a few hours here and there to learning how to use your smoker and what happens when you do certain things. And trust me, you'd much rather screw around cooking nothing than screw around while you're cooking something and ruin it. Speaking of the size of wood you need, you do need to process wood a little bit. So for example, this is one split of wood that I got delivered. I can't just take this and throw it in this firebox. I have to break it down to about this size, 11 inches in length, and then split it once. It doesn't take much time, but it is something to think about. You do have to cut the wood up a little bit. And you can do that while you're cooking as well, so you can save time there, but 
just something to remember. It's not as easy as just going down to your hardware store and getting a bag of pellets or picking up a propane tank. The next thing is it does take a bit of time to get this cooker up to temperature. So you typically start with some charcoal in a charcoal chimney, you let that burn down, that's gonna take about 20 minutes. Once it's red hot, you put it in the firebox, and then you put some wood on top of that, try to get a nice coal bed formed. That's gonna spike your temperatures in the cooking chamber, which you have to wait for them to come back down. And this all has to be done before you put food on. So you could let a brisket come up to a room temperature for about 45 minutes, and that's sort of nice. But it's not as easy as just coming out here, flipping a switch, turning it on, letting it get to temp, and in 10 minutes you're cooking. It does take 45 minutes to an hour to get this thing going. So when it comes to quicker cooks, a lot of people might say it's not worth it. So at the end of the day, you're not gonna have dinner ready in 30 minutes. If that's what you're looking for, this ain't for you. And then the last con is the portability of these. This is a thick ass boy, it's 1200 pounds. Your good quality offset smokers weigh a little bit. And we're not even talking about 500 gallon smokers. Like, yeah, obviously you need those on a trailer. But I'm not loading this thing up into my truck and bringing it down to my friend's house to do a smoke. If you're looking for a smoker you can move easily, this ain't the one for you. This thing is in my front yard, I keep it in my garage, but my Brazos is in my backyard. And that thing was also a pain in the ass to move. So if you're looking for portability and wanna bring your smoker to a friend's house or a, a tailgate or the campground, don't go with an offset. So if you just heard all that and still think offset smoking is for you, let's talk about what you need to look for when considering purchasing an offset smoker. First off, the thickness of the metal. If I bring you in close here, that's pretty damn thick. This is 3 8 inch thick steel. The standard for smoking is a quarter inch. Now, I personally wouldn't go any lower than a quarter inch because I'm in New England. If you're living in a warmer climate, like in Texas or something, you can go to 1 8 inch thick steel, but quarter inch is the standard. This is a little bit overkill, but especially for here in New England where we get colder temperatures, the thicker the better. And the thicker your steel is, the better time you're gonna have maintaining temps and holding temps. Keep in mind though, the thicker the steel, the heavier it's gonna be. And especially with this door, I can't lift this with one hand. So I sort of have to use two hands to move this. If you're someone that can't lift very easily, you might wanna consider getting a little bit thinner steel or getting a counterbalance. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is your cooking space. How much space do you need to cook for people? If it's just yourself, you're just a single person and just wanna make barbecue like I am, then you don't need that big of a cooking space. But if you're trying to cook for a family or for parties and you need to cook many briskets or many pork butts at once, you're gonna to wanna to get something that has a lot of space. Like I said, this thing has a top rack. I take that out because I don't really use it. But if I wanted to, I could throw a bunch of briskets on here. I could throw some chicken up top. The possibilities are endless. And for a backyard smoker, this is a great size. 94 gallons, Freedom 94, get it? The other thing you wanna consider is your grates. Like I said, this one's removable up top. This one I can move back and forth. Do you want the ability to move this grate in and out? Some people like it, I don't really care, but I know that some people don't wanna stick their face in a plume of smoke. So if you don't like sticking your face in smoke, you might wanna consider getting a grate that pulls out on both the top and bottom. The next thing to consider, is there a grease drain? This is very important, you don't wanna have a grease fire, so you definitely wanna get a smoker with a built-in grease drain. Yes, there are smokers on the market, your cheap ones, that don't have this. Don't buy them. Next, temperature probes. Are they even included, or do you have to drill them yourself, and where are they placed? Now, in this smoker, we have two, one right here and one right here, and these are at great level for the most part, so I can see what my temperatures are where the food is. My Brazos has a probe right here. It's useless. I don't need to know what the temperature is right here, which would equate to about right here on the smoker because my food's not down there. So I end up sticking my thermal works in there and getting my temperatures that way because I don't care about the middle of the smoker. Now the Brazos had a port built in for the temperature probe. If you buy a smoker, you want to get something with a probe or something that has the option for you to put a probe in, unless you really like drilling holes and cutting through metal and all that good stuff, then yeah, you can do that yourself. But for me, I just like having it built in. These are tell truth thermometers they are the best in the business. Another thing you wanna consider is how big is your firebox and how big is your stack? Now, the bigger the firebox, the more wood you're gonna use. However, the easier it will be to control temperatures. I would take a big firebox any day over a smaller one because 
the smaller it is, the smaller your wood's gonna have to be. It's gonna take more time to process. And every time you add a split on, it's gonna bump the temps up. So on my Brazos, I use significantly smaller splits than I do on this bad boy. When it comes to the stack, your stack size is going to determine how much draw you have through the smoker. So that's gonna mean more even cooking. It's gonna mean better temperature control throughout. And so the smaller the stack size is, the harder of a time you're gonna have maintaining a clean fire and you're gonna have less draw, which is gonna mean less even cooking. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is the firebox insulated. This firebox is insulated at the bottom. It makes cooking and maintaining a coal bed way easier. And then you also wanna look at the dampers. This smoker, for example, I can control the temperature right here. There's no fancy dampers on the side or anything. It's all controlled by this door. And I can even shut it completely if I'd like to. And I also have a damper up here on the stack. That's gonna control my draw and where the hot spot is on the smoker. Just having dampers there and here are enough. You don't need a bunch of different fancy opening, closing, all that crap. These are fine but just make sure you have two of them because these are very important things to control. And the last thing you wanna look at is gaps. If I close this down, this seals pretty well. I'm not burning a fire so you can't see it right now, but you can check out my test burn video. This has literally no gaps in this door. There's no gap at the stack. There's no gap in the firebox door. There's no gap between the firebox and the cooking chamber. This whole smoker is one solid piece welded together. Now I can unscrew this stack and take it off, but keep in mind the more assembly that you have to do to get your smoker working, the worse results you're gonna have when it comes to cooking. The more things you can take apart means the more of a chance you have to screw something up, meaning temperature swings, difficulty maintaining a clean fire, things breaking, this thing is just one solid piece. I don't have to worry about anything. So if you have to like take your smoker out of a box and put it together, don't even waste your money. And then the last thing you need to think about is storage. Where are you gonna put this thing? Like I said, my Brazos is under cover with a cover in the backyard. This thing is massive. I keep it in my garage under cover. If possible, you wanna have your smoker under cover or at least have a cover for it if one is made for it. I know some people like to put tarps on theirs or whatever, that's fine. But just consider the size of the smoker and where you're gonna put it before you go out and purchase a 500 gallon smoker. And look at this, we're out at the Brazos now. I decided to uncover this, take a look at it, see how it's doing. I haven't used it since probably October. So this thing has been sitting under cover for a few months and I just thought maybe we'll give a little bit of attention to it. And the reason I wanna give this thing some love and attention is if you're still here, you're probably wondering, what do I recommend if you are to buy an offset smoker, especially if you're just starting out? I love the Brazos. It was my first smoker. I'm gonna have it forever. Even though I'm definitely getting myself a Freedom 94, the Brazos is second to none when it comes to a quality smoker for the price. Now I did a full video review of this smoker in the past, so you can check that out. But when I first started barbecue, I picked this thing up for a thousand bucks plus a hundred dollars shipping. Right now, I think it's 1100 bucks and depends on where you live for the shipping cost. Now, like I said before, you can spend down and get something that's a little bit cheaper, like $500. You can still get an old country smoker. You go with like the Pecos model. It's just thinner steel. But like I mentioned, if you're in colder temperatures, you definitely want to have quarter inch thick steel. This smoker allowed me to learn barbecue without dealing with putting anything together or dealing with massive temperature spikes or any of that crap that you get with a smaller smoker. The firebox is big enough where you can burn real splits, good size splits. The temperatures are somewhat easy to control, but the smaller the smoker, the worse time you're gonna have with steady temperature control. I did have to do some modifications to it, like extending the stack, which I have the extension in the smoker itself right now. And I took the baffle plate out. You can check out that video as well, but that only cost me like $30. So for the money I spent on this smoker, I've pumped out some delicious food. And more importantly, I'm getting closer to mastering the craft. So check out Academy Sports website. I'll put a link in the description if you are interested in one of these smokers. Like I said, can't go wrong. I do wanna mention though the Freedom 94 from Patriot Pits that I was in front of before. I typically wouldn't recommend that to someone who's just starting out in barbecue because you want to sort of learn if you like doing offset smoking before you go out and drop $3,700 on a smoker of that size or quality. But to each their own, if that's what you're into, feel free. I just don't personally recommend it. I know some people that picked that up as their first smoker and they had great luck with it. And I would highly recommend it for someone who wants to up their smoking game or maybe you just want ease of use. The thing is a beast. And I did a full walkthrough of that bad boy. I'll put the link for that video here so you can check it out. If you decide to reach out and order yourself a Patriot Pits smoker, just remember, 
use the code FATTIES and you'll get a free handcrafted charcoal chimney and a firebox tool. Once again, fatties, just like in my name, fatty. The last thing I'll say, and I can't stress this enough, don't go buy a smoker you have to put together. You're just gonna drive yourself absolutely nuts. The more assembly that's required, the more frustrated you're gonna be. Just keep that in mind. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for this episode of Fatty's Feasts. If you stuck around till the end, I really appreciate it. You have no idea how much it means to me. And I hope you found value in today's content. I hope I allowed you to figure out if offset smoking might be something you want to dabble in. Or maybe you're saying the opposite of, I'm not going to waste my time. I already know I'm going to hate it. But either way, if you liked what you saw today, please smash that like button and get my content out to more people. Leave a comment with any questions you might have about offset smoking that I didn't answer in this video. I'll answer all of you. Right below me, I will put a video where I walk through this beautiful Old Country Brazo smoker. And over here, I'm going to put a video where I walk through the Patriot Pits Freedom 94. That way you can check those out and possibly purchase one. Just saying. And then right here, you can subscribe if you love my average face so much. Until next time, everyone, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay hungry.